Comparing DAC and ADC, okay, this is DAC, this is um, DAC, and then ADC is what we have done like previous videos only. So the difference is that DAC, you are, you are using a negative feedback system. Why am I talking? Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> DAC is actually a inverting amplifier of N, inverting of N. Okay, you are connecting all your inputs into your negative input while this is actually reference to ground and it should be zero volts or so so this is actually a negative this is actually a inverting op m so for dac you use inverting op m okay these are the things you need to take note equivalent circuits okay 2r 2r just that they are you know and then for DAC is quite quite straightforward. ADC is a little different. ADC um uh you have a V in okay connected in series and you have a V reference connected in series also. And then your V in um will connect into the amplifier op I mean not op M while the V reference also connect to the op M while the V in connects to the to the to the non inverting the plus sign while the V reference connect to the V in which is the negative sign which is the inverting one so V in minus V reference you will get some values out then you can con compare your VDD which is your whatever DD you are so these are the things that you need to take note so this is actually a non inverting M op M while the AEC or the DAC is actually inverting op M so you need to know the difference. I may be wrong uh, from what I see is actually like that. So yeah. And then there'll be a there'll be no closed loop system. Okay, there'll be no closed loop system. For for DAC as you can see, you have a closed loop system feedbacks. And then you 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 measure and then for for ADC in this case you can see that there is no feedback system at all. Can you see any feedback system? There is no feedback systems. Straight away connects to the the all git. There's no feedback system at all, right? So and so the only feedback system it is is actually over here. Like for example, digital RAM ADC. Your feedback system is actually uh there's a bigger bigger op M over here, and then you feedback to your CTR, and then it goes all the way to the DAC, and then it goes all the way down, and then it feedbacks again. So there's only one op M big op M inside the digital RAM ADC or the small little op amps are inside this CTR and DAC or whatever but it's using a different type of method similar to this one I mean similar to this one yeah. and then you need to know there is a four type of um, different ADC the, um, the, the flash ADC that we use often and then um, digital RAM successive tracking and then you need to know um, who are they uh, like who are they and how are they different and how are, how are they under which situation can you apply them or what lah. so um this alliancing alliance uh alliancing means that um you have to ensure that your that's that's a side note like you have to ensure that your your frequency your your sample frequency has to be two times the frequency of the input signal so let's say your input signal is this one, right? You have to ensure that your sample is it's um at least two times of the input signal. In this case, let's say this is actually from the tutorial one. Okay, if you were to give me a while, yeah, you can see um three frequencies: one, five, and twenty hertz. This is one hertz. This is five hertz. This is twenty hertz. If it's one hertz, if you input a a a source of twenty times per second, meaning you input a twenty hertz of a input, okay, you have a very nice curve same output, okay, because it is more than two times of the initial input hertz, right? It is like twenty times, so you can you can take twenty points to measure, and then if you have a five hertz, as you can see. Um, your your the measurement is starting to get a little off the pitch, but you can still measure the 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 peak points, can know a little bit of it, 
So at least you can still get a little understanding of these things all along. Okay, so this is the five hertz. So five hertz wise, you're taking only you are taking twenty frequency points. So it is still four is four times than the five frequency. So at least you can still get some signals. But however, if you are twenty hertz input, but and then your sample size is twenty hertz also, you are getting one straight line because you cannot. You need based on the Nyquist Nyquist frequency theorem, you have to ensure that your your frequency has to be. It says your sample at a rate of double at its fre highest frequency. The highest frequency is actually the the input frequency twenty hertz. So you have to ensure that your frequency has to be double your sample frequency has to be double the input frequency in order to at least get some see something uh, see something so this is the thing that um we are trying to convey and then uh hopefully it clears away a lot of tutorial one doubts and store fairly well knowledge although there are other chapters like um hold on, hold on. there are sensor types that I didn't go through there are a lot, a lot of things that I didn't go through, and then there are also um how to connect the um resistance, how to connect the voltage, current, everything, multimeter. This one I also don't know what the hell. I so need to take note. And then L four, lecture four. What do I have over here? Uh, there is some cheat code over here. I think, but I, I yeah. Let's give it out first, and then um, there will also be bandwidth. I haven't talked about it, the frequency and such op amp. So you need to understand what are the ideal op amp. I think you need to memorize. So um, memorize, memorize, memorize. Okay. So everything. Mm, let me see. I think you memorize like I cannot explain to you. That's memorize can already. So I'll see you in the next video. Um, if I happen to done a tutorial too, if I have time. So now it's six forty-five. I have about three hours. Yeah, whatever. So bye bye.